Right, we're going to head to Turkey now and the presidential election there. One of the four candidates is dropping out of the race. Uh, Muharram Inja uh, is an opposition politician who stood against the current president, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, before. Uh, this could now increase the support for the main opposition candidate, Kemal Kilic Adarolu. He's ahead of Erdogan in the opinion polls with 49% of the vote. Right, we can go live to Washington, D.C. now, and we can uh, speak to Professor uh, Sinan Sidi, who's a senior fellow on uh, Turkey at the Foundation for Defence of Democracy Centre on a Military and Political Power. Thank you very much for coming on the programme. Good evening. Hi there. So what's your assessment? Just a couple of days to go before this election. It's basically Erdogan versus potentially someone who isn't Erdogan for the first time in 20 odd years. Uh, the stakes are pretty high. What's your assessment of the state of play? Well, I will say I was there the night at the BBC World Service at the Turkish service 21 years ago when he was elected. Uh, and seeing this until now, um, it, it starting to re resemble somewhat of a Brazilian soap opera with sort of very dramatic sort of, being, you know, uh, crescendos coming up to the final line of electioneering. And as you just mentioned, with Mr. Inge dropping out, uh, there is heightened optimism on the part of, you know, many Turkish voters who would like to see President Erdogan ousted at the polls. Uh, whether that happens or not is we, we're going to have to see because the race is on a knife's edge at this point, with uh, the polling suggesting that the you know Mr. Kalish Thurlow and Mr. Erdogan now neck and neck. It remains to be seen whether the sort of few percentage points that Mr. Inge was predicted to get will shift towards Mr. Erdogan. Who knows? Well, let's say that it does. Let's say that President Erdogan loses, which, again, as you know, Sunday is the election. We're not making any predictions here. But just hypothetically, if that happens, how worried are you of potential authoritarian traits coming through, potentially denying uh, his loss at the election at the ballot box or resisting going? Um, I'm actually pretty worried. I have been worried since the beginning of this race because uh, just of the structural impediments that the president Erdogan, the Justice and Development Party, has you know basically put in place from the Supreme Election Council to the Constitutional Court, which have all been packed with loyalists, uh, to law enforcement agencies, the military and paramilitary forces that have been somewhat vocal at saying that they would stand behind the president should should things go uh, awry. Now, what, what we'll have to see what will happen. Turkey has a long history of electioneering and a peaceful transfer of power, although we've never seen this under President Erdogan. And he certainly challenged election results before, going back to the 2019 uh, uh, municipal elections when he initially denied and reran the Istanbul mayoral election. So there's there's fear and trepidation. But that being said, if it's a, if it's a victory for Mr. Kovic Darulu, uh, you know, a win is a win. And there are many analysts and followers of Turkey who suggest that essentially if that were the case, then there would be little to stand in the way of a transfer of power one way or another, be okay. it peaceful or otherwise. Well, if there is that transfer of power, big if, uh, for various reasons, uh, it's not going to be an easy task. The state of the country, inflation, uh, just one uh, thing, it's going to be a huge challenge. Right. It's, the country is a walking disaster at this point. I mean, the inflation rate is, you know, in the top five in the world. Uh, the Turks are finding it very difficult to buy, you know, potatoes, onions, the basic sort of staples. Uh, can, you know, uh, unemployment and lack of foreign currency reserves means that immediately following the elections, there's going to be a very hard reckoning for whoever is in charge, simply because some of these economic realities will come to bang on the door of the, of the government. Indeed. Sinan Sidi, been absolutely fascinating uh, talking to you. Thanks very much for coming on the programme. Thanks very much.